r slash ask reddit what were the biggest middle fingers from companies to customers giving discounted rates to new customers only and none to long-term subscribers members for example cable companies they often don't care about their loyal customers as much as new customers cell phone companies are like that too switch you're considered new if you return to check the best deal out once you find a better one change yep been bouncing between two cell phone companies for over a decade google images removing their view image button because get your little beaches duck i thought i was going mad when i went to view image and it didn't work was questioning my memory for sure someone probably made a mandela effect video about it the Walt Disney Company got huge by making films out of public domain fairy tales and then saw to it that copyright was extended indefinitely. Duck has even tried to copyright some public domain stories. I worked in the intellectual property field for years, protecting people's rights to their inventions and creations. I remember my stomach sinking when I read that decision. I love books and what Disney and the courts did is reprehensible. They tried to claim at one point they had a copyright on Peter Pan. No, not just their movie, all Peter Pan. My favorite cartoon in the afternoon lineup back in the early 90s was Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates. Very different interpretation than Disney's. Peter had messy brown hair instead of straight red, wore brown instead of green, coon skin cap instead of green with a feather. Tinkerbell was more frumpy flower than sexy dragonfly. Every character was designed very differently from Disney's interpretation, and the storytelling had a very different feel, as well, and Disney took Fox to court over it. This was back when they were still new enough to be considered an underdog company in a market dominated by the likes of CBS and ABC. On what basis? Because apparently the fact that they made one movie based on a story that had been out of copyright for years except in the UK, apparently, they now owned everything Peter Pan. Or at least were big enough and intimidating enough they could usually convince someone to settle before getting to court. They lost, of course. Fox went to court over it, and won. When Xfinity took the Cartoon Network off basic cable and moved it to premium. I'm paying 20 extra bucks a month for Nick Jr. because of this. Not even HD Nick Jr. Always online single player games. Why, why, do I need to be online to play solitaire? So that you can be served ads. Or so that they can collect data and offer you deals on those sweet, sweet power-ups. I'm looking at you, EA. I own The Sims 4. I don't need to be online to play it. I'm not a goddamn pirate and even if I was it's none of your business. In 1994, Intel's Pentium chip had a flaw that led to some math errors. They first denied it outright, even though it was super easy to demonstrate. They then agreed to replace chips for customers who could demonstrate that it affected them. They finally relented after a media storm and government threats of investigation caused their stock to plummet. Also Intel. Hey have this 7700k it's great and we are going to make it completely obsolete in 6 months. AMD in 2017. I'm about to end this man's whole career. A 24 hour supermarket I used to service would do all their stocking between 1 4 am. Every day, during that time, this group of old biddies would do their shopping, and constantly complain about the employees being in the way, doing their jobs. Well the old women started actively complaining about the employees stocking, and began calling management every day, after a week or so. The store solution was to tell the old women well I guess you're gonna stop coming in that early and now they shut their doors from midnight to 5, to allow the workers to stock in peace. But that's awesome of the store. Brazilian company bought Tim Hortons, coffee shop in Canada, and immediately changed all the products to ones they use for other businesses they own their food distributors and throw out Tim's coffee supplier. McDonald's smartly picked up the coffee supplier and is having success with their coffee now. Food at Tim Hortons is garbage now. Just complete middle finger to the customers and history of the brand demo. McDonald's smartly picked up the coffee supplier and is having success with their coffee now. No kidding? I wondered why I started not to mind McDonald's coffee. My ISP charges an extra fee to enable the Wi-Fi on the router I had to pay for. Edit. I got my own router on day one because duck that. I've already saved back over twice the cost of it. 
Unfortunately if you don't own your modem and router you're doing it wrong. You'll save money in the long run buying your own versus renting or buying from the ice. Then every time something goes wrong with the service it's your router's fault and they refuse to do anything about it. But when it's their fault, oh you have to replace that router for a few or we'll send a technician out. But that'll cost you money too. Subscription based software, like, I need Adobe Photoshop to edit photos every so often. I don't use it so much that I feel the need to pay every month. I don't need the newest features now. I just need some features that have been there for a while. And I'm perfectly content with that feature set for a long while. Why should I pay a recurring fee when I could just pay $200 ish and use it whenever I want in my life? Duck you, Adobe. Everything which is a subscription, but should be a product which is purchased one time. Same with the new office. It seems like everyone's moving to subscription services now. Shareholders love that predictable, recurring income. Service fees when buying concert tickets 0 0 Service fees for anything that offers digital tickets. One of the local festivals charges me $6 a ticket to send me a QR code in a text message. Ticketmaster is horrible. They charge convenience fees when you buy tickets yourself. Input your own information. Print tickets out with your own printer with your own ink. Oh we gotta charge you for that convenience. Back when I actually bought tickets through Ticketmaster, I was like duck that and went to a music store, when those existed, and there was another fee. Next time I picked them up at will call at the stadium. Another fee. Your internet bill. The price increases randomly for the exact same service, and you have no other options. Not even the same service. A few years back my ISP decided to meter the connections and raise prices. Thanks Mediacom. Pharma companies. Exponentially increasing the price of everything from insulin to epipens. Please hold for the next 27 minutes. But remember, your call is important to us. We are currently experiencing heavier than normal call volume. No you aren't that's your normal call volume. You're just too goddamn cheap to hire enough people. At some point, you have to admit that heavier than normal is the new normal and hire some ducking people. They don't even have to do that. My local ISP, not one of the big ones, has a feature where you call, get queued up, and then you can hang up. When your turn comes, it calls you back. I don't have to sit for however long listening to music. I can go do something else, or even just watch some TV or duck around on my phone. A small, simple change that requires no additional employees, doesn't even shrink the wait time, but still improves the experience massively. I used to work at a mom and pop restaurant that would be open till 9pm. Kitchen would close at 8.30, but on Saturdays ITD be open till 10 and kitchen 9.30. Every other Saturday, a gigantic family came in at 9.15 and demanded to be seated. Real a-hole rich beach family. Some of them won't even look at me when ordering or asking for something. Feed always stay well past 10pm, so staff would often have to go home at midnight. But they tipped very well and left the tables organized easy to clean so we didn't bother. Until one day when the boss and most of the staff closed to shop. Turned off the open sign and shut down the kitchen. Early to celebrate a long time co-workers day. But this family came in and starting yelling at the birthday girl and the staff for not cooking for them and all that. My boss straight up threatened to call the police if they didn't leave immediately and from then on Saturdays closed at the same time as other days. Planned obsolescence. I absolutely hate this concept. It should be criminal. Especially with the environment being at a critical point now. You paid for it. Your taxes went to build the infrastructure. Now it is privately owned and here is your next increase in rates. They promised would never happen. Care to elaborate for the... A uh, cough uneducated? Not 100% sure I'm remembering this right. I'd say the award for shittiest company move has to go to Verizon for throttling the data of firefighters in California and requesting they pay more to receive the same quality that they should have been receiving all along. Knowing full well that they had no choice but to pay so they could continue trying to stop the entire west coast from going up in smoke. Classy. Oh shit. Then they made those commercials about how firefighters used their network because it was dependable. As someone who used Verizon in an emergency context, the bill was $2 phone for phones in the contract. After that, 
they could upcharge us if say, we called our captain's personal cell as opposed to his work cell. Service also was spotty in our area. Here in Finland a movie theater chain gives discounts to those serving in the army, but only during the weekdays. You know, the days that they can't leave the barracks. Every oil spill ever. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're really sorry. Facebook and Google selling our personal data and then being like yeah I sell all your data tf you gonna do about it kissing beach when everybody found out and then continuing to sell our data for the next 10 years because we're about as powerful as a potato bug with a rocket launcher. It would be such a huge move for everyone to just stop using Facebook and mass. I know I know DMV complaints are so blah but I'm dead ass convinced my state DMV doesn't actually have anyone who answers phones. But, they also don't let you do most transactions online and they advertise that there is a number to call for questions and to do certain transactions. I tried calling so many times that I started to experiment with it, and over the span of 3 months I'd called them at least once every single hour they were open and at least 4 separate times each day of the week they were open. Every, 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 every time it would ring once, give a we're experiencing an unusually high call volume message, and hang up on me, like just ducking don't have a number listed, don't tell people they have to call, or make your recorded message say that you have to go to a DMV office in person, or give an email or web address or something, what in the hell good does this do anyone? I feel like this intentional but it'll go. Here in Colombia we have a delivery service called Rappi, it is basically a courier system of people on bikes and motorcycles who will go shopping for you or pick up food or deliver things for you. So they recently added a test program where if you order more the higher tier you are, you get more discounts and apparently are treated better. Well I recently wrecked the highest tier and honestly feel the quality has gone down for me. No customer service response. Deliveries sometimes take longer and things like that. The worst part is my friends who hardly use the service constantly get free $10 credits thrown at them while I get nothing. It's because you use their service. I was getting more offers on eBay using my second account, as I rarely use it. The Nestle C is saying water isn't a human right and should be privatized. He's just repeating what the UN said C. 2005. Dr. Pedley. It's not just free mobile games, it's AAA games that you already paid for too. Airlines charging £30 plus for 15 kilograms hold bags each way. This is the first comment I've seen about airlines and I'm really surprised I had to scroll down so far to find it. Literally it's only within the past 5ish years that airlines moved from bad to horrible. I know the whole setup used to be that discount airlines like Spirit and Frontier would upcharge for bags and seat selection but it was okay because their tickets were just so much cheaper. Meanwhile the bigger airlines like United would just have all that stuff in included because it was so expensive and you get what you pay for. But United and all the other nicer airlines realized that they could make money putting in tier systems for types of seating and charging more for a bag than Spirit ever did. Oops read that wrong. Biggest middle finger to customers? Continuing to jack up the price just because they can. 6000% is a massive duck you. That'll be $18. Oh, you need this to live? I didn't know. In that case that'll be $4,900 every month, or you die. Wells Fargo, they've taken homes from elderly folks with paid off mortgages. They've illegally repoed military members' cars while deployed. They've committed fraud at every opportunity. Their whole extra account thing was far from an isolated incident. I really need to switch banks. But duck is it a pain in the ass with 20 plus bills, taxes, mortgage, etc. All linked to the account I've had for 20 plus years. Come on now. How much effort will it take? Find a credit union and switch. Take one day out of your life to say I'm mad as hell. And I'm not going to take it anymore. You'll be so happy. YouTube not giving notifications for certain channels and instantly demonetizing channels for no reason. The problem is that YouTube is a little beach baby company that sits in the corner and lets people pick on them because they don't want to get sued. They stay out of copyright claims entirely because of this and it screws everyone over. I wish there was a YouTube jury or something. Boeing forcing through the 737 MAX program with the horrible design errors it had. 
Comcast, and other similar companies, raising rates on their services year after year. I'm so glad the cord cutting movement is gaining traction. Our family has been off Comcast for 2 years and, each month, we save enough for 3 ad free subscription services. Duck if I'm paying to watch a show that's more than half ads. I worked in retail. Prices on clothes go up every year. Not because the quality of the product has changed, but because their billion plus dollar profit wasn't good enough. Raising prices on insulin and epipens. In the 80s Bayer accidentally sold HIV and hepatitis C infected clotting agents to people with hemophilia. When they found out their medicine was actually making their patients sicker they just started selling the medicine overseas instead cause they didn't want to lose any money on the stock they already had. Giving people HIV tainted medicine, especially in an era where that would be a guaranteed death sentence is really ducking despicable. Apple and other tech companies business practices and models. You spend thousands of dollars on a MacBook or iPhone and then they charge you almost the cost of a new unit to repair. They don't sell parts to consumers burning some circumstances they do allow Apple authorized service providers which is like a shittier version of their stores. If you brought your iPhone into an AASP for a charge port repair they'd have to send it to Apple because it's soldered to the board when it's a separate daughter board and be easily replaced by an independent repair shop. And forget about replacing a failed hard drive or RAM model in the newer MacBooks. Everything is soldered to the logic board and they are loaded with other hardware related problems. And just about every component is serialized so even if you find a used replacement part on eBay, it won't work without special software that Apple has. And it's not just Apple that does this. John Deere pulls the same shit with big farm tractors. Farmers don't have access to the special diagnostic and repair software needed to perform service. So if a simple little sensor fails you have to send the equipment to a dealer which could be hundreds of miles away and cost thousands of dollars just to transport it. Time is money in any business, especially in agriculture. They make 4x the money in service and sales. I'm probably late to the party, but how John Deere basically forces the people who own the tractors to get them serviced at a dealer via the software not allowing the tractor to work if it detects a non-John Deere official part, which are only available from the dealers. I could be a bit wrong on the details, so if I am wrong please let me know. Health insurance companies charging exorbitant amounts of money for insurance while also not covering a thing. Duck you I pay good money cover my shit. Every single action with Spectrum US Cable Monopoly. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.